Hey guys, it's Melanie and welcome to my kitchen. Without saying too much, I haven't posted a whole lot of kitchen food videos, which is really hard because I've always loved cooking and eating. But to be quite honest with you guys, it's something I've been struggling with kind of a lot and I've tried to film things about it, but it's really scary to talk about it on the internet. So I figured this would be kind of an intro into it. Not to beat around the bush, I, I'm not gonna self-diagnose, but I've had a lot of eating problems. Um, sweets have always been a fear food, kind of anything with chocolate in it for me. You guys on my Instagram story, if you guys had any questions or just kind of like an open discussion about body positivity and insecurities, hopefully encourage and show you guys, I don't know, like build a community, show you guys I'm here to talk to you about it too and hopefully you guys can talk to each other. I've already rambled a little bit and I'm gonna start making my favorite cookie recipe. So let's just get started. This is kind of embarrassing. I have to look up my recipe on my phone. I used to make this so much that I had it down by memory, but since moving here, I honestly just haven't baked that much, which is kind of surprising now that I have this whole nice kitchen to myself. I do want to say a quick disclaimer. I honestly feel like with this topic, it's so touchy, I could give disclaimers for hours on it. I am not a professional, I am figuring things out at the same time you guys all are. I want to be posting this more as like a friend and more than saying like, this is fact and this is truth because I'm growing as we go. My mind is probably going to change on a lot of these topics. Guys, it is present day Melanie. As you can see, I'm back home and you can tell that there is a big gap between, you know, obviously that was when I was in my apartment. I filmed a couple clips of my thoughts like changing and different things I've been going through, kind of just to document it for myself and to show you guys that I'm trying to grow and get better, but it is a constant struggle. I'm just honestly at this point where I'm so sick of being so afraid of, of food, and afraid of being open about it too. Like, I still don't know how to talk about it. Hi guys, I haven't filmed in a while, but I just felt like I needed to talk to someone about it. So I'm talking to my camera. This is kind of just an update with where I'm at. I don't know if I'm going to post this. I'm just really frustrated because I've been struggling a lot with binge eating. I can't help but like push off this video every single time. Really hard because you know, you have good days and bad days and I feel like for the most part I was doing pretty well recently but I don't know. I just, body image feels like is something I've never been good at. It feels like I can never find a happy in between. But I'm just trying to put this out there, show where I'm at and hopefully help some of you guys this isn't really a recipe i'm kind of just doing this so i'm not just sitting here talking because i'll probably be really awkward um, for you guys to watch <laughs> but um also look at these little sticks of butter i got a ton of comments about like acne stretch marks different parts of your body i guess that you're just insecure about and as much as social media and I guess our generation or society idealizes and has the perfect body type. We know by now that that's always changing. You just perceive yourself so different. Not to say that you don't have like stretch marks or a certain size because I mean you do, but that's the way you were made. That's the way you are. And sure, there are things you can do about that. You can work out, you can do things that are good or bad for your body to change that. But at the same time, you look the way you look for a reason and that's beautiful and it's more about changing your mindset and learning to love that it's something you know but you have to keep telling yourself because i know deep down that god made me this way oh this is really hard to mix i heard this thing and i love to to remind myself this you're comparing your worst because i feel like we like to pick out our flaws and a lot of people commented about like looking in a mirror and hating what you see in the mirror which um, made me really sad to see but at the same time i totally get it even looking myself in this camera right now is kind of like messing with my head i like can't get out of my sweatpants and hoodie because i hate looking at myself but you're comparing what you hate about yourself to what you wish you had with other people picking out the worst parts of yourself and comparing it to the best parts of other people because it's so much easier with angles with photoshop with filters with I don't know, different fitting clothes, literally with everything to be more confident and to look a different way than, you know, looking at yourself in 360 in a mirror um, for 
hours. Okay, now I'm tried a lot of stuff. Someone said eating disorders maybe or feeling embarrassed to ask for help. I'm gonna focus kind of on feeling scared to ask for help. Um, once again, I never went to like a doctor or anything and I barely honestly talked about it with my own experiences. I do wanna say also posting this as much as I wanna help you guys, I think this is also um, hopefully gonna help me a lot too because I feel like the more I'm open about it and talk about it, whether it's with friends, whether it's with, I don't know, my mom, anyone online, on social media, it helps me to stay accountable because it's really easy to fall into a dark hole in an accountability sense. I haven't done a great job at documenting anything just because I feel like in the back of my head I know I'm, I don't want to end up posting it or like I chicken out at the last minute like I, I've posted small things saying like I'm gonna talk about like my struggles with food or like what I went through because I feel like even just looking at my pictures looking at my videos it's pretty blatant but I never really said anything and that's just how I deal with my life I go on with a lot of things trying to put on a strong face and like not speaking up about things kind of is like keeping something a secret because I haven't talked about it on my channel but if I'm gonna talk about it I want to be completely transparent and I have to keep stopping myself because there's so many things around food that make me feel like I have to filter everything I'm saying this person asked about what what did they oh too embarrassed to ask for help honestly I will say with my personal experience as hard as it was some of the most relieving moments and the brightest moments from this dark journey dang i've been doing this forever or when i went to people for help even if it's like a small step it's still a step talking to friends and being more open about it then you can keep each other accountable i would just encourage you as much possible to and i know it's really scary but it's kind of one of those things like if you're in denial with yourself you're gonna have to want to get better yourself and a big way of doing that is like talking to other people about it the part about being embarrassed i feel like the last thing to feel is embarrassed which i know like you can't really help it but the honest truth is that even if someone hasn't experienced the exact same thing as you like everybody's insecure most like if it's a good person if they're your friend and they care about you and they love you they're gonna want to help you through it because nobody wants you to feel bad about yourself like they want to help you any way possible and it's kind of the same thing about how they probably see you in a very different light because we're all our own worst critics weight eating disorders society's body expectations i just think it's constantly changing at the end of the day what does it matter about if they define your body as pretty it's your body if you have society's ideal body and you're miserable inside and I can say it for myself once I did like achieve the the number I wanted once I achieved the small waist that society thinks is pretty or, or the thigh gap that society thinks is beautiful I still didn't feel content inside and I think I felt even worse about myself to be honest like no matter what I don't want to go back to what I was doing to myself before but it's just so tempting it seems almost like an easy way out i also know you sacrifice so much and it's just not worth it i like set all these goals and it's like i'm i literally feel like i'm two different people because in the morning or on my good days i just feel so good about everything and like i can really turn this around i way better than i was before and i can just set these small goals and like make a change but then literally at night i'm like this epic mentality where i'm like it doesn't even matter you're just not going to find fulfillment from approval of others, approval of society, or your appearance in general. You want to be confident, happy, loving yourself based on being actually yourself and being the best form of you. Okay, I got a lot of questions about small boobs or butts and being flat. And let me just say, like, I am CEO. <laughs> I get it. You have what you have. Of course, you can get fillers or surgery and stuff. And if you do that, that's up to you. If it makes you have it in something, I've had to learn to get past. Like, with all body insecurities, you got what you got. Embrace it. And then if other people say something, that's their problem. I got a lot of things about being too skinny. I wasn't really aware of this because I feel like I was on the other end of it but I know a lot of people do struggle with like gaining weight and all I can say about that is like it's the same thing as much as you shouldn't call someone fat you should never say someone's too skinny you should once again that's like out of their control I'm cutting her cheek kisses because we don't have like normal milk chocolate someone asked 
if faith plays a role in my self-confidence and i'll say that it really did does does when i was like at my lowest I feel like I really leaned on my faith a lot and it's what helped me get out of it. Of course, I'm not trying to force my faith on anyone or anything like that, but it did help me a lot just knowing that I'm made the way I am by God. His opinion is the only one that matters and he cares about your heart and your soul, not your weight on the scale, not the measurement of your waist. Um, I will put a, a couple of verses that I like to refer back to when I was struggling a lot. And I mean, I still look at a lot feeling like you shouldn't eat because you ate bad earlier this is something i honestly struggled with a lot a lot of like binge restrict kind of stuff it's something that like i don't even know how to determine a binge sometimes because sometimes i'm just like oh that's okay like i shouldn't be so strict on myself i can eat junk food but it's at the point where i just feel like crap every night and i'm like overeating to this extent where i just feel so guilty afterwards because it's way more like and my head is like counting all the calories and like what i'm doing to myself and i'm like why did i like why did i do that i wasn't even hungry none of that even sounded good it's kind of disgusting and i i don't want that in my body but i can't like help it it like messes with my whole mindset and timeline because after i do that i'm like well i guess i need to like stay up later sleep in later so that my next day is shorter so i don't eat as much or like I try to counteract all the damage I've done to my body, but it's, I know it's just a bad mindset. But then I end up not eating the next day and then I binge again at night because I'm so hungry. From personal experience, all I can say is that it really builds up. If you try to restrict, your body wants what it wants and it like needs what it needs also. Like it needs a certain amount of calories. And if you're restricting that, it's really going to come to bite you in the butt. And I honestly learned that the hard way. Not only does it impact you and your physical appearance, it'll impact you mentally and it'll also affect you emotionally too. Like you don't feel good when you're always like overstuffed and you're always feeling guilty from it. I don't know guilt is just like one of the worst feelings and it's so stupid that it's i'm guilty about something that i need to like live like it seems so insignificant feeling guilty about food imagine if you felt bad about drinking water or breathing it's such a double-ended thing because it's like i know i need it and it shouldn't be a bad thing but in my mind like it's so screwed up so I would just encourage you to have something. I think a lot of eating, from what I've learned about like nutrition stuff, is eating isn't just eating to survive. There's different kinds of fueling your body. There's also like, eating to fuel like your emotional side. Anything to help you feel like satiated. So even if you're physically full and you've had enough calories for today, you still might not be satisfied and that's completely okay. Like if you want some sweets, even though you're not gonna die without them, like it's still super fine to eat it. And that's something that it took me so long to wrap my mind around. Um, restricting binging goes kind of along what I was kind of talking about. My experience from it, it affected me so much more like mentally um than the other parts of what i struggled with like there are nights when i'd be like sobbing over it and i didn't know like what was wrong with me me personally i hated not having control of it. and then restricting it's just so frustrating because it feels like i know everything that i should be doing but i can't control it this time and like before my problem was controlling everything like not having anything in sight and like locking myself in my room so i wouldn't eat anything and i'd be super strict on like what i could and couldn't eat when i was doing that like i had no social life i was severely like depriving myself from any calories i wasn't eating basically at all the next one is on counting calories i i mean kind of have experience with this i know it sucks even after you're like recovered or trying to recover i just think like eating issues are so long term i still label the foods good and bad and and it doesn't even stop there i feel like it affects so much of my social life and it's it's weird because like i like being at home but something with being home is tied to this because this is where um like it began and never really ended and so i think it's just been making things harder but i don't want to just like run from it like i want to be able to conquer it for myself and i know i can do that and for so long i felt really really dumb about it because i was like there are people struggling with so much worse and like addiction to drugs and alcohol and i'm over here i can't even control if i eat a cookie or like i will cry if i eat too much chocolate and i just felt terrible about it but it sucks because it's so long term i can guarantee you like 10 years from now i'm probably still gonna know how many calories are in something and when i'm better like it has lasting effects beyond your physical appearance like my mental state has 
and everywhere. Of course, it works for some people, but it is also a very toxic path. Workout routine, I get this question so much and working out was also something that became kind of obsessive for me. Now is still super good for you, of course, exercises. For me, it is something that like helps my mental state a lot. Like if I'm having a bad day or feeling down, going on a walk or like just moving a little bit helps so much. Keep yourself accountable on that too. If you're spending hours at the gym um, and not being productive and it's a punishment that can also be really tolling on you. Like you don't want to overwork yourself. But I will say like I get a lot of questions on that and personally has, isn't really a routine. It's been kind of just whatever I feel like honestly, which I don't know if that's good or bad, but I'm giving myself a lot of leeway with like recovery and doing what feels best. So the reason I haven't really posted a workout routine is for this exact reason. I also just really, really want to preface this that you can do the exact same workout, you can do the exact same things as a model, as your skinny friend, as another person, as the social media influencer you watch. You can even do more than them and you're still gonna look different and that's just because everyone's body's different and that's perfectly okay. Someone says I'm trying to lose weight but I'm scared I'm gonna become obsessive and have an eating disorder. So you really have to check yourself and your heart and why you're doing it. It's really easy to become obsessive about those things. Check why you want to. I don't think the end goal should be to lose weight. Maybe get more toned to be able to do more like reps of something, to run longer. Those are all completely fine but I would just say if you're worried about it and if you know you have like a history, maybe talk to someone about it just so that you know they can keep you in check how to deal with weight gain and recovery okay so this is kind of where i'm at right now and it's kind of really tough what i tell myself is just know that your weight your body doesn't define you your body's also super temporary and i've learned that because i've ranged from literally like i don't want to say numbers but i've ranged in a lot of weights in a short amount of time so i know weight gain and weight loss is possible and i just want my body to find its natural spot where it's happiest and healthiest at it's not the end of the world if you gain weight it's really not this one just said personal experiences how you dealt with it i mean okay honestly little secret i've tried to film so many things about this probably would be helpful if i had more clips or if i filmed mid struggle but like Honestly, it's so hard to film on the bad days. I mean, I guess right now it's kind of a bad day. I woke up and I feel like crappy about everything. It's kind of therapeutic just to talk to a camera, but I, I feel like this isn't doing anyone good. Like just talking negatively about myself and how I have low confidence. I guess this is just to document and show myself and you guys that nobody always feels good about themselves. To keep it short, my low was junior year I believe and it was just like a downward spiral. My mental state made me want to isolate myself and then my isolation made my mental state go down even more. So it was just like a continuous thing. I just wanna say thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you for your questions. Feel free to comment below. I would love to chat with you guys and I hope to be doing more videos on this kind of stuff in the future just because it's something that's been on my mind my heart for a while and I've just been really scared to talk about it and kind of just not ready but I've also come to the point where I've learned that there's never going to be a point when you're fully healed, fully recovered, ready to take it on and there's not going to be a point where I know everything so as much as I'm saying things and maybe I do sound like I know what I'm talking about, there's always room to grow. I'm super open to hearing your guys' thoughts about all of this and you know just being able to support each other but I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video and sending love to you all. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys! I know you won't believe, so come on, baby, be with me so happily.